Hello and welcome to Hugo's Hobbies. This is the first video and probably the last one on my channel that's in English. And the reason is easy, because a lot of people are using this hot wire cutter from Proxen or any other brand, but that's the most common hot wire cutter I think, to cut the styrofoam for dioramas and tabletop stuff. And this hot wire cutter is really a useful tool for that. That's the reason why it's so common and there are a lot of tutorials on it on YouTube. But however, it has some flaws. One of it being this thing that's supposed to allow you some straight cuts, but it's too wobbly and so, small wonder, that is the first thing that most people get rid of and get something better. There are a lot of tools, specially made for this Proxen one, Whoops. made by a Dutch guy called Gerard Boom, or Gerard Boom in English. <laughs> um, I never worked with any of his tools, I have to admit. Because to me, I'm just a student, they are a little bit too expensive. I'm pretty sure they are worth their money. That's why a lot of people are using them. And they seem to be really good, what I've seen from YouTube tutorials and anything. And I will probably get my hands on some of his tools sooner or later. But I was thinking, aren't there any other possibilities with which I can pimp this hot wire cutter by Proxen. And having a lot of Legos in my basement, I was thinking, yeah, let's give that a try. And we'll get a closer look to that, what I found out. If we want to improve that hot wire cutter, just like Gerard Boom with his tools did, we have to take a look what we can work with. There are two rails here. One here, one there, and that's it. There could be rails on the other sides, but there aren't. So we just have to work with these two. I don't see any other options. So the first thing I tried was, does a single stud piece fit into these rails? And it does. It can slide, but these rails get a little narrower downwards and if you push it down it doesn't move anymore so it's hard to get it back out again for this I used this this thing it's a small stripe of feathering metal in Germany you could find these all around the streets cause the street cleaning devices these big trucks that clean the streets um, have these things in their brushes Carefully get this under the brick and pop it out, just like that. But let's take another look, another closer look at this alignment. You can take a plate and put it on top of the brick and it fits like it was intended to fit like that. There's a little room for movement but not very much and we have another rail to work with. So that's a good starting point. We need, however, a smooth surface so we can slide the styrofoam easily over our working table. So having this discovered, I experimented with these big plates because they have a smooth surface. And that experiment resulted in a bigger table, far more bigger than the normal table from the hot wire cutter. But all was wibbly wobbly and it didn't work out quite well. So I was thinking again. The next idea I had was to use a hell lot of these Lego Technic beams, leaving a hole in the middle for the wire, and using this wedge here for one rail and two rows of plates, the top one smooth without studs for the other rail. 
to assemble this table to the hot wire cutter we have to take it apart because we have to fiddle the wire through this hole and then we can put the parts back together press it into the rails and ta-da! we got a smooth table to work with those of you familiar with lego probably noticed the pattern I arranged all this there is a single row of Technic beams two rows of plates a single row of Technic beams two rows of plates and so on that's because the distance between these two holes is the same distance as between these two holes see you can put this there and there 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 that allows for using different tools that can stick to this pattern and can be aligned in very different ways. The first thing I built was this big, massive, well-balanced cutting rail for cutting big and high pieces. I left out some holes here. So we can just take some pins and fix that on the table. We can take more pins for the forward holes. And you can see there's no movement like with this, nah, let's say like it is with this crap rail that comes with a hot wire cutter. As you can see, or probably not see due to video quality, is that the wire is pretty close to our rail. So that way if we got a pretty thin piece to cut, we risk to burn our hands against this wire. So the ne next tool I built, again copied from Gerhard Bohm, was this kind of hand guard. It has this little latch here, where you can fit your piece you want to cut. And just easily slide it along that rail. Let's try that out. Hold that rail in place because it is a bit wobbly on the top side but if you don't press too hard against it, it isn't even necessary to hold it. Just like that we got an evenly thin plate to work with. Given the fact that the Lego parts fit to that Proxon hot wire cutter so perfectly, like it was intended to do, um, we got a really good starting point. Having already used Lego Technic parts, there are, I don't know, <laughs> unlimited ways to develop more complex tools to maybe even start some automation using motors or anything like that that automatically produces whatever we need I don't know but I myself are not very good at Lego Technic so I tried but failed to make more complex tools I can show you some examples it's possible to work pretty precisely using Lego Technic parts this one for example I don't know what it's called in English. In German we call that snail or slug or whatever um, transmission. So it moves pretty slow and is fixed in place. So with this device you can pretty exactly 
work with five degrees exact angles and putting some nails on a wheel there you can see the transmission I spoke of if you know what it's called in English please write it down in the comments so you can pin your block of styrofoam against that and should be able to work pretty precisely so I was trying to use this technique to kind of copy Gerhard Bohm's, in my opinion, most interesting tool, the shapeshifter, which allows you to cut, uh, what's it called in English, Zwiebeltürme, onion towers. You know, this uh, complex roofs like in Russian churches or anything like that. And that's what I achieved with my Lego parts. Uh, yeah, you can see what it was meant to look like, but the result is pretty shitty. Uh, another thing I tried out was to cut a pillar. You can see the holes where the nails punch through. A pillar that has six sides that are evenly long. Looks pretty decent from that angle, but if you turn it, no, that's shit. You can't use it. So that's why you are asked and that's why I made this video in English. I googled it, I searched on YouTube and it seems like nobody had the idea I had to use Lego to pimp your proxen cutter or at least nobody showed it on the internet I know of. So if you are better in Lego Technic than I am, and that's not a hard task, you are asked to get the basics and think about other tools, about what you can do, experiment with it and maybe find better ways to make really complex and really cool tools to use with a hot wire cutter and some Lego. And I am really interested in what you can achieve with it. So please share making videos on what you made. Um, one important thing I almost forgot. I showed you this and it's really precisely, it holds the angle perfectly. No wibbly wobbly thing there. But the hard part for precise cutting is rails. They have to run smoothly like that one, pretty simple, but they are not allowed for too much movement and this here moves far too much. So that's why this thing looks like it looks. Because that wasn't held in place the right way. I experimented, I experimented with a lot of other Lego parts with some gears and toothed um, plates or whatever and nothing worked. It was either too hard so that it didn't run smoothly or it was too wobbly. I couldn't find a way to make these rails work like they should for precise cutting. So that's one of the most important parts to figure out and I hope any one of you has some ideas that's why I made this video in English, to at least for this one single purpose uh, reach a bigger audience so that there are more minds worldwide thinking about that and trying to figure out what is possible with the basic solutions I found. So thanks for watching. Again, this is the only English video on my channel and it probably will stay the only English video on my, uh, on my channel. If you want, you can check out my other videos, but be warned, they are in German. And my German isn't much better than my English, because I'm talking too fast. So, thanks for watching, have a nice day, post what you think, and see you next time. Bye bye.